What's up, everybody? I'm Kyle Carlson, and this is the Rollback BMX Podcast, the number one BMX podcast in the universe, according to me. Today's guest is Colin Varignac. Colin rides for Fiend and Animal and is one of the best street riders in the world today. He's dropped countless incredible video parts and even won a silver medal this year in X Games Real Street. So sit back, listen up, prepare to hear a bunch of really interesting stuff. This is the Rollback BMX Podcast with Colin Varignac. Colin, what's up, man? Good morning. How you doing? I am wonderful. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. Thanks again for the uh, coffee. Where'd you get this at anyway? OB Beans. It's down the street on Newport. OB Beans. It's a, it's a roaster. They roast it there. Well, I don't know much about that. Uh, Ronnie Napolitan tried to educate me about it once. So did Jamie Bestwick. And I was just kind of like, I just trade him money and they give me the coffee. <laughs> Ooh, beanheads. Beanhead. <laughs> My girlfriend calls them beanheads. That's a little bit offensive. Yeah. No, no. And like, in like know, a, it's like a... It's like a, you know, you're a beanhead. That means you're a can, uh, what do you call it? Coffeeophile. Coffeeophile. I don't even know what you'd call it. <laughs> it's funny because I totally get it because I jock out with beer sometimes when yeah, people talk about it. Especially and I'm like, living in San Diego. Cause totally. It's like, but I feel like that's like San Diego, good coffee, good beer. That's like their, good food. Good food. They, yeah, it's a good Bad everything. cost of living. Bad cost of, very <laughs> bad cost of living. Yeah, that's. The worst part about being here, but there's so, not too many bad parts. So I was talking to you, and you said you had to go to work today, and I actually didn't know you were working at all. Yeah. So are you substitute teaching? Is that what it is? Yeah. So I, um, it's so funny because kids always ask me, like, you know, like, what do I do? And it's always funny because I, like, sometimes I want to tell them, like, hey, I like substitute teach, but I, I try to keep it low key just because I don't know. It's just weird. There's a lot of stuff on the internet with BMX that's like I don't. But at the same time, there really isn't anything that bad. Like as far as you like look at anything, there really isn't. But it's just weird to be a teacher and and like working with kids. And I, I don't know. I don't. I I feel like I should tell more kids that I do it because it is kind of a cool thing that I am in the schools and I get to hang out with kids all day. And I feel like I can relate to them a lot because of you know BMX kind of keeps that kid side in you. Yeah, and I I think stuff like this is is good for people to understand because. I think it's important for young riders and just people in general that kind of understand that like the grass isn't necessarily always greener. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you take a step back. If I was a kid, I'd be like, Oh, Oh, it's Colin. Yeah. He's probably like, you know, he might be busy shopping for a new BMW today, but he's probably going to ride after. Yeah. No, <laughs> you know? not the case, man. I'm all, I, and I, and I drive Uber and Lyft on the side too. So it's like long-term hustle. Yeah. Long. It's always hustling, you know, especially in San because San Diego is like right now me and my girlfriend pay, double what i because i have my own place in philly double our place is double what my place was in philly and my place in philly was center city it was huge it was like a lost style and apart. philly's kind and of a cool city that's it not is. like you're living it, somewhere it was, that it sucks it was, it was awesome man it's like it was so hard to give up that place too because i knew what it was going to be coming out here i'm like i'm gonna be lucky to get and it's what we have it's like a decent one bedroom you know and we pay a ridiculous amount for it I mean, it, we split it, so it's like that's the only way I could even do it. <laughs> yeah. Realistically, it's like other than that, I'd be in a studio, but or I'd have some roommates. What What keeps you out here? Oh man, it's ah oh, man, that's like do you love we it? Just, we just talked about it: the coffee, the food, <laughs> the, the weather, everything out here is just. I really do feel like the quality of living is just better. Me, me personally, I'm an outside outside kind of person. Whether it's like beach, I actually just got a road bike recently. I've been doing that a bunch, or just anything like I need to be outside in good weather. Like it makes me so happy. Like sunshine really does just make me smile. You so. say that as we look outside and it's overcast. It is rare. It's a rare. <laughs> it's a. Hey, but you know not what? By, not by the beach. It's probably probably blue skies at your house. Yeah, it probably is because we are. Yeah, you get that. What do they call it? Ocean mist. It has a, has Ocean, a, has a no, sexy no. name. There's a the beard. marine layer. There you go. The marine yeah, layer. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. it. But yeah, man, just being like days like this. Like when it is like this, it's like almost refreshing because it feels a little bit like home you know yeah and it's kind of it's kind of nice but well, i grew up in vegas that's blue skies every day so i thoroughly embrace this this marine layer i always love going to the pacific northwest where it's overcast because it's just such a nice like it's different i was in blue skies every day yeah, and i see nice. how it could turn depressing if you run it every single day but i i'm i'm not yet it's good for housework it's like if i want to clean the house like a day like this it's like every time to do some laundry and some well cleaning. In, in this neighborhood particularly there's like six breweries we could walk to it's a good day to accidentally start drinking oh, beer all day. we might have to do that after, <laughs> after yeah this. let me know man if you got time let's let's party i'll yeah. definitely i owe you some beers for your time here because you're a uh, very important busy man you know no i'm not that important if i was important I, oh, I was i was kidding i'm the important uh, one I, yeah you definitely are how long you been in san diego san diego so i moved out here like a year so i went to college and then i moved out here like a year after and then I was out here for like three and a half years and then moved back to Philly for a year. 
and then came back out here and i've been back out here for two years now so man like all together like going on five years now what uh what what brought you back out when you went back do you go back to philly just to try to replace some money or what uh, I, honestly man i went back to philly because at the time like um animal like everything with animal was kind of like up in the air you know and the, the brand was when it was that when they were potentially selling the brand and all it the was yeah stuff? things okay. got things got crazy for a minute and yeah. like and uh you know like ralph being the g that he is like ended up coming through and 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 got got the company some money got it's, the company it's, it's some funding and cool he could make that happen because it was it was it, pretty it, grim man we, it, was, it was really it was all grim, rumors man. i would hear out yeah. here on the west coast yeah but everyone like, was talking but you know he made it happen and it was it was sick we that was like right before the animal house the one in new york city and i was just like talking to ralph a bunch you know and at the time you know i was like living with garrett um but when i had first moved out here it was like a bunch of us were living in a house together and then garrett bought a house which was i mean his house is so sick too it was like so dope and th- shout out to garrett for you know letting me stay with him for so long you, you lived in that house for a while didn't yeah, you? yeah yeah it was sick man. i mean it was like dude it was so cool living there too because it's a nice house it is it is i had like my own bedroom and like my own shower it was it was cool man and garrett he's such a gm and his girlfriend you know dealt with me for probably too long you know and it was just time it got to that point where it was just time for me to like you know like everyone was getting a little bit older it was time for me to kind of like move on and figure something out it was really expensive well it was it was just you and garrett and his chick right yeah yeah and that's just and they, i mean they've been together a long time you're kind of third wheeling time. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, at some point it's like they need their you know what i mean these I, I gotta get out of here they're not gonna kick you out you have to no no yeah i got, got it man like these guys are, they're gonna they're gonna really hate me if i don't get out of here soon so um yeah um it just seemed like it was a good time to go back east and you know start doing stuff with animal because it was like all right stuff's gonna like navaz is gonna be filming for for the company and i personally it's just navaz is like shout out to navaz he's literally one of my favorite filmers and to ha- have had the opportunity to work with him and and work on a part that was so special to me and like meant like that the, the animal house the part. animal house part yeah that part will forever mean so much to me because that's like a dream scenario like i grew up watching his project video projects and like i mean the, the ride insight video that video had such a strong impact on me and it's just the way he put Inside it together chet blacksmith yeah and uh who else davy watson had yeah, to, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. so good like all oh, the way he put it together riding it, and that was just like it would give me goosebumps you know like watching the intro to that to that and everyone talk and everyone kind of you know were you, giving, were, you, were you a fan of left right as well yeah that was course, that was one of the course. first videos i saw that i was like of course oh shit this is like even aside from the writing, this is really cool. Yeah, like, of course. Yeah, and that's and you know he's such a creative, a creative individual. So it was, it was just like wow, I get to, I can go, I can move back east, be closer to my family because at that time I started to miss them a lot. You know, I was out here for a few years, and I'm gonna be able to work with you know like this dude that's like I've looked up to his filming forever. So it just made so much sense, you know. And I, I went back and moved into that house. Like we had that house in New York for a month, and that was. I'd say it's probably one of the best months of my life just being there and like being able to ride with a bunch of the OGs from the Animal Squad and being able to you know film and, and work with Navaz every day and having come rack- through with that fucking last part. I mean, dude, I shit. couldn't couldn't have, couldn't have done couldn't have, couldn't have done it without everyone else. Like it wasn't that's the cool thing about it. Like it wasn't a me part or anything like that. Like if it was Racket wasn't there, I wouldn't have been able to do any of that because he yeah. showed us around. He was. Like, and such a G, dude, at the house every day, never, ne- like, never late, never, you know, like, just in touch with everyone. He'd always show up to the house and he'd show us around every single day for the entire month. Like, for him to do that, like, that's, that's a lot to put on that's anyone, a, you know, a for a full, a full month, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. to show people around. Like, I know when people come out here and they want me to show them around, it's like, after the first, like, few days, like, fuck, I'm doing, like, hey, I'm man, doing uh, the, yeah, I'm doing, your flight. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing the tour that, you know, so for him to do that and to take us to all these spots for him, it was crazy, you know, and Navas to have to keep up with us and pedal through, because at the time, it was like, Hoder, and Hoder pedals so fast, he's such yeah. a big dude, you know, him and Grawl, he's got to have a crazy gear ratio, right, Hoder? Yeah, they, if he and, doesn't, they, it's and just like, 180, so cr- 180 cranks, you know, just full, boom, boom, yeah. and those are just, I couldn't keep up, you know, I was just, I, I think Navas is a clip somewhere of, like, rat kid rolling up like with a smile on his face and me behind him just like breathing for <laughs> heavy air i mean i was just like dude these guys they mob yeah 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 i uh i think your last clip in that is one of the best street clips of all time is that the 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 feeble 180 double peg backwards bar you know what i'm talking about the yeah, two rails I, yeah. dude, that how many tries was that i was a lot it took us like two hours it was like that took me a long time to even try like the first 180 and then after the 180 it took me a while to like get it right and to do the bar but that i mean 
I don't know how much that stands out to you and, and your accomplishments of that clip to me really stands out both of just you as a writer and also uh, street writing as a whole, man. That's kind of like embodies. I think that kind of embodies progression in street writing. I mean, thank you. you that's you, that's, that's it, the it nicest went, thing went, anyone's ever said. It went, it went from uh, from grinding this rail to uh, grind this rail to bar to grind this rail to hop over and grind it on the other side to grind this rail and hop over 180 on the other side. Fakie bar. I was just like so many levels of progression in one trick. That's it's just that's still I mean, what is that a couple years ago? That's still one of the craziest clips of all time. Technical wise, that's. I'll get off your nuts here, but I love no, that clip. Was that, thank you, man. That's <laughs> awesome. I was really happy about that one too. It was cool because my brother was there and like my Did your like, brother ride. Yeah, man. My brother, he is a G dude. He, it's so funny because he he didn't he used to race when we were younger and he was he was pretty good, you know. But I he didn't like the pressure of racing and I, I mean, understand does that. anyone? Nobody does, you know. So I think you grow out of it a lot of the time. And if you don't, yeah, you become an just, Olympian, you know. Yeah, <laughs> one or the other. Um, so you know he. And then he played back. He was real good at basketball. So he was he did that all through high school. And then after high school, Navaz. Let's talk about Navaz again. Navaz. I showed him the cult video. Um, let him. T- was it no talk is? Uh, was it talk? It was the first. It was like the. It was VX. You know which one was it? Talk is cheaper. Let him talk. I'm so I can't. Um, when Dak had like the eight minute long is, final part, it was like think, three songs. I think, the I think three let, song him, let part. him talk was first. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. and that. Or then was it talk is cheap? I don't know. I thought it's it like was like because doesn't that kind of? I just think if someone was like, hey, no, because they like, had like their their intro like video, and then they did the the one video. I don't know, man. Uh, I can't believe I don't remember the name of the video. I guarantee, but, <laughs> I guarantee it has the word talk in it. Something it's some yeah, talks definitely in in the title. But yeah, so my brother watched that video. He sat down and watched that video with me. Um, and he was like, it was like right around the time that I, I, it was right after college, I tore my ACL and I was just like hanging around the house bummed and he was just keeping me company. And like, he started watching, like started watching it. And he was like, what? Like, this is crazy. Like, I didn't know you guys are doing this. Like, he just did, he like almost missed the rev, like, cause BMX chain has changed so much in like the last 10 years. And I tell kids like young kids that now all the time, they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm like, you guys don't like, don't even know. Like when I grew up and like when I was at the skate park with like scotty just the way people rode and the the way the bikes were and like the kind of tricks that they were doing it's just everything has evolved it's so much different now it's become like it's definitely become more jibby and and controlled but it's like you know just the kind of the setups that everyone's riding and the things that people are doing you know and he watched that video and everyone had their own style in that video too and he just he got a really good impression of like bmx and what street riding was i think and he just like he wanted to get a bike you know i want to get a bike you know and so i hit up garrett and i was like yo like just to see like you know like Garrett you know you think and he's just like yeah we'll give him everything like I'm like what you know he's like yeah just get and he like literally sent my brother everything well to be fair you can't be Colin's brother rolling up on something that isn't <laughs> yeah. so you gotta you gotta play both sides so yeah here. he hooked him up with a setup and like dude like it was so bad for the first month like he <laughs> he because he had like he had heart and he was trying to like he was putting it all he like wanted to figure it out he, and he's athletic too so he wasn't like he don't like sucking at stuff you know like he don't like he's just one of those like, he's got to be good at it or he's not gonna not gonna have fun so he really was putting in work like trying to learn how to grind and like you know when you don't know how to fall on a bike it's just tragic you just like he would try to like feeble miss the back peg and like end up on his back and his elbow you know as opposed like, to putting the foot down yeah, yeah i remember just, no. i remember being like uh i was probably man 13 or something and got locked into like a manual off like a curb cut and just like <laughs> did, and did like the world's like probably the longest manual of my life and just didn't know to put my back foot down so it was just you like don't, that you don't know. straight to the back no just yeah like, you don't know this should have been like a ha ha that Ooh, was fun grab the like, brakes or something it was like no this is death yeah and he started with four pegs too i'm pretty sure so that's another that was another all you know, sorts like of things pegs, trip on hit your <laughs> yeah the pegs that's like the, the, the notorious thing when you like first put on four pegs is that you go to take your foot off and the back peg catches your like achilles and, and throws you back you know and that happened to him a couple times but he he stuck through it and he like learned how to ride to like he could do like hop 180 bars and hop no threes shit. that's awesome like yeah like he, he could hit handrails like he hit how, a little how much shit. how much younger is he than you he's like five years younger than me so he's like 25 right now oh cool right he's like 24 are you, are you, are you 25 30? no i'm 28 so he's like oh, four years younger than you're me you're bad at math dude 28 so yeah. much for that degree i know right because <laughs> <laughs> he's technically like so when I was a senior, he was still in eighth grade, but I was like really young for my grade and he was old for his grade. So that's how, like we're like four years apart, but we were five grade, five grades apart, if that makes any sense. It makes perfect sense, yeah. actually. <laughs> I hope so. Um, but yeah, no, nah, he's, he's- Is he awesome. still riding at all? 
Yeah, he is. He's actually, I, he's actually just booked a ticket out here. Cool. Um, but cool. he's not bringing his bike. He's not because he's been like, um, just for his job, he like drives a lot. He's got like CDL, so he's always, he's like driving, drives a truck a lot, and and does like a lot of physical work too. So his back's been kind of bother, bothering him, and he's been at a chiropractor, and he's actually been doing like a lot of physical therapy and stuff with it. And it's been getting better. Like he's been feeling a lot better, but he's kind of like hasn't. He's taken some time off the BMX, and he's like, I don't really want to come out there and like. I'm going to be, cause you know how it is out here. It's like you're, you go from on the East coast, you ride here and there to like out here, you, you ride every day and there's so much to ride. You can yep. ride all day. He's yep. like, he's like, why don't we do like a snowboarding trip? So he's actually coming. He's going to bring a snowboard and we're going to drive up to mammoth. Hell yeah. And it'd be kind of cool. A little change of pace. Cause I go up there, like I get a season pass every year and then go, go up there, try to get there as it's expensive. So I try to get there as much as I can. But how much is a season pass up there? So it's like, uh, so it's like 700, which sounds ridiculous. I know it's like 700. But then you can go whenever like, you want yeah that's it's not doesn't sound ridiculous and, at all and the like this new pass is the icon pass so it's like is not that a, all their resorts they have multiple resorts yeah it's so it's and it's everywhere in north america like and there's even there's a mountain in japan so it's like literally no I, i'm gonna go back east for christmas and i might bring my snow because you can't ride at christmas back yeah. on the east coast but like killing killington mountain is one of them um on the east coast in vermont so i might go up there and snowboard and then there's a bunch in colorado like jackson hole is one of them and like all like the, these really good resorts but like the stipulations on the pass is like you only have like 10 days at that mountain or five days but you would never go for more than that anyway because you don't live there kind of a thing you know so it's like i can go to all these different resorts on like five to ten day vacations and go you know like i wouldn't even it's, be able to it's, hit. it's made for a tourist it's, it's made, for not a tourist. made yeah for yeah it's not yeah but they, they have and they have like an unlimited unlimited one but that one's like a thousand and there's just no like i won't go that much you know yeah no i mean that sounds like i don't know man like don't get me wrong money sucks and i spend way too much of it but when something like brings you that much joy and it's 700 bucks and it's like multiple times times and yeah, you break it down if you go enough times and it costs you 60 bucks a time fuck, yeah perfect. oh and not even that's the thing i went what made me really like really was like i went one time uh with like it was like ty and like andrew castaneda and we they bumped the tickets from like i think they were like 110 to like 160 or something that day because it snowed and it was like ended and i was like we were there for two days so it would have been like literally like 320 bucks for Ooh, for wow. two days of boarding and i'm like dude that's half i, I didn't, I mean, that's, I didn't realize they could fluctuate that's, yeah that's they, they do that yeah they, they do that because it's a bunch of rich people and it's yep. like you drive all the way up to mammoth you're not gonna not spend the extra 50 bucks you're like well i'm here what am i gonna just turn around and go home there's a bunch of fresh no like it's yeah they got you you know it's a it's a rich guy sport it is a rich guy sport i know that's what we we and we rough it out too like we sleep in the cars we can't like we camp when we can camp and we can't like that's why I got the Subaru Outback. I literally get like a little like a one of those mattress pads, throw it in the back, fold the seats down, cuddle up for the night. You know, wake up and board. That's that's dope though. I mean, that's you're getting your uh, you're getting your seven hundred bucks worth. Yeah, it's raw. <laughs> it's definitely raw. Think of yeah. all the worst ways you could blow seven hundred bucks. There's a lot worse ways. Cocaine. Yeah, I think it's ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely definitely two <laughs> terrible ways to blow it. So what's up with all this uh, this YouTube shit you kind of dived in on? I always thought. Let me give you my two cents before you dive in on this. Are you are you, are you still doing it? I uh, I want to. I need to. And I, I, I like plan to. Yeah, I'm gonna start making videos again. I uh, I don't follow the YouTube stuff enough because I'm a salty old man to have very valid opinions on it. Yeah, but some kind of weird dudes will do it and like get a following so i hear like you're doing it and i'm like oh it's gonna be a game changer because he's a cool dude that does cool shit you know we've never seen like a street dude who will do this um you know not nothing against austin Augie. i think i think of him as a youtube guy first Bore, like, you know not nothing against him but i remember the first time i met austin Augie. i'm kind of going on a tangent here i really like austin i don't know if you do but i really like austin yeah I love austin. um he's funny first time i met him I met him in Arizona when he was living out there and somebody said something about him out here and I'm like, Oh shit. How do you know that dude? That's awesome. And like, they're like, Oh, he's like big on YouTube. And I'm like, I thought, I just thought he was cool. Cause he did a really long Smith grind. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize he was doing all that shit. Anyways, when you started doing it, I was like, okay, this should probably be a bit of a game changer for the YouTube thing. Cause nobody at the top at the peak of BMX has really dived in like that. Obviously Scotty does what he does. He's kind of on his own own page with his crew and kind of character shit, but you're kind of yeah. like, no top street dude has ever gone out and been like, I'm doing this YouTube thing. Yeah. And it's weird too, because I feel like, like for a while with the YouTube thing, it's like, I kind of like towards, especially towards like the end of it, I kind of got caught up in like doing, and I think it's like a, how a lot of people like do become sex, successful on YouTube is like doing kind of like what you got to do to like get the numbers and doing certain yep. things. And like, that's kind of why I stopped doing it because it like wasn't fun. And I felt like I was almost like 
trying to like and I was like this is weird like this isn't why I started doing the YouTube thing which really like for me it was almost like a creative outlet like I I looked at it like and I think people still with that like oh it's so stupid it's like this like you're into yourself type of thing whatever but like for me I've always just thought it was like you've always been really into yourself yeah I love myself (laughs) no no and that's the thing even when I started I like I didn't even want to film myself like I just like wanted to film stuff but like you can't like you can't tell a story without you know and you can it's it's hard to make video consistent consistent videos like on a channel like that without talking to the camera you know and that was hard for me to do at first in general but I think like the way I first saw it was like yo it's this channel and you can pretty much do whatever you want with it and make whatever kind of content you want whether people watch it or not you know and I think that's like like why I'm like excited to start making videos again because I kind of want to like obviously like I'll end up doing vlogs just because they're like did you did you start doing the YouTube stuff because you were genuinely into it or were you just looking for another outlet to get paid no no that like the money it, like when I first started it really wasn't about money at all it was about because like it was about keeping like I, I didn't have so like I moved to Philly you know and my intentions from when I moved to Philly were to like you know kind of film with Navaz a bunch um and i think at the time like and total like totally understandable in the he's been filming for so many years for so long i think he's just kind of was like past it a little bit you know he was like wasn't trying like you know like in all fairness i'm not the easiest person to film either you know i take a really long time to do a lot of things so that's what happens when you try hard shit yeah yeah you know and it's just like it, it's just it was hard for us to both we're both old we're you know like he's like he has a job he's got stuff going on he's got a life and it's just it was hard and i wasn't like really filming as much as I wanted to be. And I, and I was a lot cheaper to live in Philly. And at the time I wasn't really working as much. So I had a lot of free time and I just felt I was going crazy. Cause I'm like, yo, I'm not, I'm not working. Like, this is crazy. Like I'm, I'm paid. I'm, I'm a professional rider. And I'd like, I have no outlet. Like I have no, like nothing really like, like I'm not producing anything, you know? And I'm like, I need to do something. And I just, I thought of YouTube. I was like, well, I here I can like make videos and like, make stuff and create something and it's at least like i can show people that i'm still like doing something you know and and, and then like i can get creative because like in high school like i edited like a huge portion of like our, our senior video you know i have like the class yeah, yeah, yeah. tv yeah. you know like and i've always been into video editing one of my good friends uh jimmy jam uh we filmed a bunch of stuff when when i was younger like a, just a bunch of like bmx stuff and, and other things like that he actually like films rap videos and he he has like a whole career doing that and stuff and, nice. and you know he taught me a lot i know so i've always kind of like been into the whole video thing and just the idea that you know it's pretty amazing you can go out like with a camera and, and you can create something you know you have this like piece of work from like the day or from whatever you know you go back like i i'll even sometimes just watch old vlogs and just to think like yeah, that's great like you know like that's what happened that day i was there here doing that you know so it's like i don't know i i never really looked at it as like oh i'm gonna make a youtube and just make a bunch of money and get rich you know like i didn't even understand youtube for the longest time like <laughs> like billy and augie like they had to like explain youtube to me almost so they're like no no like this you know what i mean because i'm the, I just like nah you just like make videos you know they play because i was like i didn't i didn't know there was like this whole culture behind it at first you know yeah i didn't i didn't either yeah but no. and i mean and then i mean like augie he was the first person to tell me about like casey neistat and that yep. was like yep you know and i like that like once I saw it, and then I like started watching that dude's videos and like they like he I was like damn these are like they were interesting you know and he wasn't doing it and I'm like this is cool you know and then like you know I kind of like started modeling like my vlogs a little bit after like the style he was doing and like I don't know I just at some point it just like for me like I just I, I don't like wasn't having fun making stuff because I just I don't know I don't even know I think it got repetitive like I was just kind of doing the same thing and and I don't think you can make videos all the time of like like it's hard like nobody's interesting 24 7 you know so at some point you're just like it's almost like you're reaching for content yeah you can tell when stuff's forced too yeah i think the only possible solution and i know they hustle for it and a lot of it gets kind of forced but like scotty and his guys yeah they kill it but they have enough different guys and they yeah have and they yeah they, they have do. like a, they have like a full-on show and it's and it's cool because they have like a concept but it's just yourself like trying <laughs> to keep it like you know because like no i mean especially my friend they don't care about my youtube you know i mean like they could care less. i mean ty, ty's cool with it though like when we're snowboarding and he'll let me film like film some clips of him and stuff but like and then like some, when i'm riding to be fair like garrett like he'll let me film clips and throw them in there and stuff but no one's like trying to be like oh let's try like let's make a dope video or do like like no one cares like so it's it's always me and then it's always weird to kind of introduce my ideas to other people and try to get them to be like oh yeah like let's make a video about this or let's make a video about that too so, I mean, I think that's like the hardest part. About- I was I was talking to Dan Foley about it when he kind of dived in it, dived in it for a bit. And he's kind of stepped away from it. 
But he, I honestly really liked his videos. I did funny. too. I, I think, and I think Dan, and I, Dan's got an incredible eye. He's, yeah, he's, he's good he's at good, putting things good, together. Yeah, Everything and he does I, looks I, good. Always, like, I like, would watch his YouTube. And like, that's another thing about YouTube too is like, I think it's just cool to see what everyone does and what everyone's up to and how they're like putting stuff together. It's cool. It's like amateur, like amateur videographers, you know, like making making stuff yeah you know? like, well what, cool. one thing dan said and i was kind of asking him about it because I, I was dan was another one and i was kind of like how is your shit not more popular like i know right it His looks, it good. looks good so you're good behind good, the camera yeah. and and dan obviously wasn't bitter about that i don't think he got into it for money in the first place I don't, but yeah. but what he was saying was he was like it was a good experience because i uh I just got better at everything I did. I got better, faster workflow, better behind the camera, better on my bike. Cause I just like, I had to be productive, you know, yeah. I, I kind of, even if it was like one video a week, I think he was doing, yeah. he's like, it's kind of like, well, that's a video I might've done a, <laughs> yeah. a week. I might've done nothing, you know? It's so funny when people hate on like, like Augie and Billy and like those dudes for the vlogs. I'm like, yo, those fools work so hard. Like you guys don't even know. Like you think, you think they don't like, you think whatever, like dude, like, like even Augie, man, like Augie, Oh, he rides savage setups. Like, oh, he's that, a bad like, motherfucker. And, yeah, he's, he's like a and bad he, motherfucker. And he falls a lot. Like it's in his videos. You know, he's falling. Like he and it's like every day. You know, like so. Like those dudes, they they work hard. They put in a lot of work and effort and time in, into what they do. You know, I think it's kind of weird that people would potentially look down on him for that sort of thing. When it's like, if you take away that layer, they're both legit fucking bike riders. Yeah, they they're are. They're both incredibly talented guys who could both film a full section that would be and they have. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's weird. I don't, I don't feel like that really takes away from what they're doing. You know, it's like, if anything, it adds to it. Like, I, to be honest, I don't really follow it. I like both those guys. I've watched some of their videos and stuff, but in a while. I, I don't watch them. I don't really watch their shit, but I still look at both those guys as legit badass riders. And if they put out a riding video, I'm going to watch it yeah like and even back in the day i remember adam lz put out some heavy riding yeah like he was, yeah, legit he did. like he, he did he did an upper hard 180 whip before i did it did he really i remember yeah, like definitely doing like, i remember seeing him see him like man that's crazy i think it was like a hard maybe an over ice like a burly over ice or an, an iced out of an apartment complex like second story yeah. rail or something so here so here's like my like i don't know man i this this is one thing that really bums me out about like it doesn't bum me out but i just like just people like BMX is like people come from all different backgrounds, all different families, all different cultures. And like, yo, people are going to be different. You know what I mean? Like Adam LZ and Edwin De La Rosa are the <laughs> two most polar opposite people that I could ever meet, but they do share a common interest. And like, do. and that's what I've always thought was cool about this sport. It was always like, I used to race and like, you go to races and there'd be like, he's rich you know what i mean like I, I remember coming out to california for a race up in del mar it was like at the racetrack uh it's probably the richest racetrack in the country yeah <laughs> it's like and it was insane like some of the people had bread and they were doing it you know and then there was people like me that were like like i don't my parents didn't make terrible money but it was it was like it'd be hard for us to get to certain races but my parents did it because they knew i loved it and it was and it was like it was just cool because that you meet you like i had such a diversity like a different diversity of friends i learned so much from that you know just like learning about different people and i don't know it's just it's just like a giant melting pot almost <laughs> you think well, about that's BMX. the thing i think bmx is just it kind of mirrors life where yeah, there's it, gonna it be does, people yeah. that are a lot like you that do it and there's gonna be people that do it that are that are douchebags yeah the people i don't like that do it yeah you know I, I think i think there are a lot more that i do like and we always have that one thing in common and i think it's important to focus on that one thing in common yeah but like anything else like there are jocks that ride bikes there are stoners yeah. that ride bikes there are hippie dudes that ride bikes it's, it's, just, it's everyone, life man yeah you know yeah. You, you got doctors and mechanical engineers and then you got homeless dudes like it's just it, it's a hard thing you know and i'm sure many yeah, other and you got and you got doctors that have never taken a risk in their life and you have doctors that are like i had one dude who did my uh did surgery on my foot he did wind or ice wind sailing or something and i like looked it up and these things go so fast and they're like they're sailing on like ice lakes you know and they're just on ice skates and these things are going like i forget like so fast you dude, know you're probably pretty, so cold while you yeah, do that <laughs> and this dude he, he did he did he's done like every type of extreme you know like and that's he's in the same office working with this dude who's never you put his you know and like their advice is completely different but yeah, they work yeah. in the same exact field and they go to, they had that same interest in you know ortho be or, to be orthopedic surgeons no different than the bmx so, riders doctors yeah. are all different I'm sure they're not all friends <laughs> i mean yeah it's it's just i mean i don't know i think that's but that's like a, a global problem it's just acceptance you know when people have different ideas or different beliefs it's really hard for people to not argue them or yeah like, that's like everyone just wants to argue why their side is right or their their point is right or why this is you know, I, and a lot just, of time there isn't a right and wrong it's like an opinion you know like always almost always an opinion I'm, I'm one of the few guys that 
through traveling and stuff and covering different events, I end up at UCI stuff, Olympic stuff. And I also end up yeah, at like every, fans around. events, end up at street events, like kind of around everybody. And it's like a lot of these guys would end up being closer friends than they realize. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's, 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 it's really funny. You say that too, you know? Cause I think a lot, yeah, people put themselves into these categories almost. It's like, you know, even you see it with BMX too. It's like, I'm a street rider. I'm a park rider. I'm a, Try, you know, like so just that. It's like you're a fucking bike rider. I don't know. You're a human I, being. You know what's funny? I went to Pat Casey's house recently. Like I saw, that, I saw yeah, a clip. That, you did, you did something sick, like a five whip or some shit. What do you do? I wish I did a five whip. What did you do? You did one eighty whip up the step up. Is that what it was? I, I did. Uh, it's probably I did. A, I I did some type of the step up too. I did like a did a few things there that I was pretty happy about. But it was just fun. Like I had a blast riding Pat Casey's house, and it was for no other reason than I don't normally get to ride stuff like that, and it's been such a long time, and I'm like. I was like, wow, this stuff is like, this is fun. And it's almost like in a weird way, certain things were easier for me. Like I used to always do tail whips when I, I used to ride the incline club, you know, but like I could never snap them the way I can. Because now I've been doing them on street for so many years. Like yeah. now it's like, oh, I have so much time to kind of like put this in where I want to put it in. And yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it just was like, I'm like, wow, this is <laughs> really fun. Like how have I, and then I even hit the dirt jumps and those were, I mean, like I almost got a little loose on those. I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> I got to go. I, I got to go get redemption. But, um but no nah, it's just it's cool you know it's like that that was one that was like more recently that's like one of the more like one of the funner sessions i've had yeah you know and yeah. so it's it's good I, I think it's good to not I, isolate yourself you know I, I don't know if people know this but you're a super 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 good park rider <laughs> like, I don't, you, you probably don't want to uh I, I know you don't do it much but I, I just remember we did that that vital bmx game of bike contest a year many years ago i think you got uh, second yeah yeah the only person that beat you was logan martin, martin the guy who's probably going to win the olympics i know dude we gotta have a, we have a <laughs> but rematch. doing flare 720s over spines like no like i don't know i, I no i just i said i did a seven over the spine that's and then that's what he did but then he crooked the rail it was pretty crazy i didn't that's he, sick he, for he him too. To, yeah it yeah, was cool yeah, yeah. it those, was cool. those events were they're kind of weird but that was so a, fun a few, a few cool things happened i remember at a really old one uh, maybe the first one we did, Stevie Churchill did a hop three whip, and then Kyle Baldock did a hop three whip right after that's on the crazy. same drop. Like that that's shit, crazy. Logan yeah. Crook in the rail. Like yeah, it's just cool because it's like there's and you know I'm sure he did that crook. It felt good. Just like when I did that seven, I was like, oh, was, you know, it felt so good. I don't ever do it, and I, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah. you're just challenging yourself in different ways, and it's just like and it shows like who's a who's a, a good bike rider kind of all around. Yeah, because you know everyone I mean? rides, everyone you know what I mean. Everyone's ridden everything. I mean, I think it's pretty clear just based on what little time you spend riding park if you really wanted to you could actually like fucking do something with it i mean is that something um, you'd ever want to do yeah it's funny you say that because i've been thinking more and more like i just built like my current setup um i've been riding like i i'm like super with geometry i'm super crazy like i i really like to try everything out and play with everything and see how everything feels and i'd probably change up my bike more than anyone i know um but i was like a huge like and i still am like an advocate of like you know different offset forks because i think that like, you like steeper yeah i will steeper and i think that that changes your bike so drastically with such a minimal amount of change and it's something that like so for instance like animal now has 15 millimeter forks and like those are the forks that i rode when i was filming the animal house and if i was to go ride in new york city those are the forks that i'd want to have on my bike because your wheelbase is you have a tighter wheelbase so your front wheel and your back wheel are closer together and what what this does like there's like the physics of it, you know, um, your center, I, I wish I had like my physics teacher would kill me because like, he explained this to me in high school too. Well, the one up you, I never had a physics teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, but, um, you know, it's just like if you were in a, if you were in a chair and you're spinning, you know, if you, if you're to get in a swivel chair, if you guys have a swivel chair, if you're in a swivel chair right now, just sit in it, just do a couple three sixties and have your aunt, your hands as far as you can apart and then hug your and then as you're spinning just hug put your hands close together and instantly your rotation will spin up and it has to do with like um you know how long your like the radius is of yeah that makes of sense like the, of like the, so when the bike is tighter and it's closer together it spins faster it snaps faster you feel so, that difference yeah like it's like hop threes just come around way quicker and like no like getting into nose manuals it's a lot easier you don't have to be nearly as steep on the bike so do you um, notice as much of a difference with a shorter back end as well, or do you just notice yeah, like oh, okay. oh a, a so, back end, so you're yeah. saying short back end, steep fork, your bikes is, is almost it's, as short as possible. It's tight. Okay. It's tight, and Hot it's sevens. like it's like like what you, when I when I explained it, it's like if you were to play like a first person shooter game and turn up the sensitivity, 
and like that's like my bike just feels super people get on like this is crazy like i can't even like i'm gonna loop out i'm gonna go this way or back it's no it's just it's tight and it allows for certain like technical maneuvers you know where it's like if my bike was a little bit longer it'd be really hard to do that and make it look smooth and like somewhat fluid fluent you know because it just it wouldn't work whereas like when i'm riding transition so that's what i was just going to talk about now like um, I think the short back end, I really think you can ride a short back end and ride transition and go. Cause like I, I how, do. How short is your back end? It's 12, seven. Is that, that's slammed, I assume. Yeah. Okay. And I, I got run it a little sh- bit back, you know, really I was like, like 13. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it feels fine, but the forks that I think the forks really like, so now I'm running the animal 20, I think they're 26 millimeters, you know, and I, like, I've already ridden a little bit of transition and it's just that, that offset in the front of the bike really makes the bike feel completely different. Like I, it's. I don't know. It just feels a lot less sensitive and a lot stabler at higher speeds. Um, so like, you know, like my bike right now, I, I like it. It's, it's definitely like, I'm definitely getting used to it. Cause I've been riding the steeper forks for a while, you know? So like, it's a little bit harder to get into nose wheelies and like doing like tricks, like three to Smith's. Like I have to, you know, Do carve and, and, and crank a little bit harder, you know, but then when I'm, when I'm riding transition, I can be a little bit more relaxed and I don't, it's not, everything is so sensitive. And so like, you, you know, going to buck me, buck me too far forward. You're talking like a man that went to college. I'm just talking like a man <laughs> who spent too much time on his bike. <laughs> just thinking about it, you know, but, um, but I, I watch these park contests and I've seen you ride park enough to know you're good at it. You're accomplished enough in street riding to obviously you have a good creative, um, a high level outlook on riding. And I mean, I don't know. I just, I look at, I had this conversation with Kevin Peraza recently where I'm like, dude, I want you to try out for the Olympics, even if you're not that into it, because I want that style of riding out there. Yeah, like realistically, what Kevin yeah. Peraza does, he's probably not going to win the Olympics. He could, it's possible, but he's probably not going to based on what they're looking for. And he's more technical and whatnot, yeah, yeah. but he could get in there. And I would like kids at home watching the Olympics to see there's more than three flips. Yeah, You can go and do a wall ride course. to 180 to cab down whip. And you it, know? Sh- it should be like, as it should be. And I, and I think some of those tricks that Peraza does are, are a lot higher risk than some of those other dudes like they don't you know i mean doing an os3 over a box is it's pretty high risk you know like there's a lot it's a very sensitive technical trick and it might not you know be as appealing as a flip whip but with a flip whip there's i mean i I don't really do flip whips but (laughs) there's a little bit more room for error you know i mean it's obviously very like a lot more consequential if you mess up and you 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 go outside of that bounds of error you know your your error boundary you know but Whereas like a nose three, if you mess up a little bit, yeah, you just go over the front or you, you don't pull it, you know, but it's a lot more sensitive of a trick. So, you know, how do you judge those tricks? I think that's the hardest part with contests in general is like, how do you judge? And I, I think I'm selfish from my standpoint because I, I think I just want people that don't know BMX to have that opportunity to where people, hopefully kids watching at home that might be interested in it can see it's different. Yeah. It, you know, and I, don't, it, I don't think it takes so a well-educated person to watch Kevin Peraza ride and watch Logan Martin ride and be like, these guys did two different things yeah, on the same completely. course. And, and to Similar be into bikes. one more than the other. And there's always, and, and even like from when I was younger, there was always the kids like that you always would imitate like for a long time, I imitated Scotty. Like that was, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. I literally, I talked to him about it recently. I was like, bro, I don't even know. There's a vital, it's not any, so vital changed their player. But at one time it was from a Hackettstown contest in New Jersey. And this was like so long ago. This was like, I was in high school. This was before I had met Garrett and everyone. And there's a clip. Well, I can't get it anymore because it's like a, one of the old players, you know? I'll, I'll see if I can figure it out if you remind me after this. <laughs> it's uh, But I did a cross-footed three-whip like over the spine. No yeah, I swear <laughs> to God. And that was like, I learned cross-footed whips and I was so juiced because like that was like Scotty had was doing them on everything. And I'm like, yeah, you know, like and that that just goes to show you how bad I sweated him and Im- imitated him. And I was just into his style of riding. Yeah. You know, just as other, there was like, you know, my, my one homie was like, super into Sergio Leos and he would just he had like the best turndowns and the best inverts and like that's how he liked to ride and that's how you know so it was just you know it's I, I think that is important to get that out there and I hope that with the Olympics there's not just all this one style of riding I really do hope that there is you know a couple some, dudes some can diversity. sneak their way in there that have, yeah, I, I think have that, that yeah yeah I, th- I think it would be good to have that diversity and show that to you know a mass audience I just I, I, I like BMX and I, I it's so hard to put it into one small category and it I really and I hate is. when there's an event that kind of mostly shows that like if you go watch a street contest and Anderson's in it and Chad's in it Chad's doing crazy manual links and Dennis is trying to whip over a fence yeah you know what I mean it's, oh, it's cool to have something like that this is diversity yeah. whereas in 
Park, yeah, there's different stuff, but it's not as drastic. Then you'll get a guy out there like Peraza, sometimes Bizanson. You know, will have like a cool wall rider, a cool line, or something like that. Just looking like, at the course, I mean, Gary Young, he's like one yeah, of my favorites absolutely. to watch because he's just always riding it his own way. He's always got this, you know what I mean? Like, and he's. I mean, his part in the Vans video, oh my God, that was so crazy. And he's as old as he is and has been around as long as he is, and he's riding better than ever, which doesn't make more, sense. Yeah, more the creative, couple, more yeah, more progressive, more creative than ever. I, I I had a conversation with Gary not that long ago, and it was maybe we were in Australia at the Vans contest down there. And I, I don't remember what he placed, but I remember pulling him aside and being like, sincerely, like, Gary, this is the best I've ever seen you ride. He's killing it, yeah. Just like legit, motivating. like so insane, motivating. man. Like, But anyway, what I'm getting at here is, if it ever makes sense for you, I'd like to see you hop on some park contests. Just, just, just fuck around. I go want, out there without. I, I really, so like Feast is doing, like I got to figure out how. I'm go to the France there. one, do but, the street thing and just enter the yeah, park one for the fucking hell of it. That's what I want to do. I want to go to like the Feast contest and because like apparently they're going to do the, sh- I, I heard that they're going to do the street at every stop next year. I hope so. And like, I, yeah, I got to figure out how to get there because that's like, I think that's so cool. I, that's like what street is kind of missing right now. Like there's no contest there's like one a year and it's like x games and then vans holds the one and but like there's like it's not I wonder, enough i wonder know? if vans will do that next year i feel like it's getting kind of tired yeah i don't know um just I that, think that same location same riders i think it's just that that thing it's really hard to get like an audience there just because it's just where it is it's it being where it is and i don't know it's just there's not even a play there's not like a good viewing area but well that there's that this is kind of a, a sidebar but there's the the pro cup they do in guadalajara yeah and randomly next you haven't been there have you to that no, park I haven't. next to that park there's like a sick plaza like pretty fucking crazy like street area yeah and they're redoing the bowls at huntington beach and i was like no you should do the street thing in guadalajara and do the bowl event at hb next year switch them for the, a year yeah that'd be cool. I, I don't know if they they will they would, yeah but, i think i think the bowl is like more of a like priority because it's like a circuit thing but yeah it would but be they cool. got, people hate that park in mexico i don't think they're gonna do that park in mexico next uh, year yeah, that'd be a good idea <laughs> put <laughs> us in there so and, and i think it's a big deal for it's a big deal for vans in mexico because there isn't a whole lot of bmx going on in mexico yeah yeah as so, far as as far as that goes yeah i mean i I'd go there in a heartbeat. It'd be so fun. You ever go to South America or Mexico at all? Dude, I was supposed to go on this trip to Ecuador and it just turned into this. Oh my God. I shout out to Marco for trying to make everything happen. I got to get in touch with him and try to get back down there because I really, and I'm sorry to all the kids in Ecuador that like I had planned on going, I had every intention on getting down there, but we just had a crazy situation with booking flights and reservations. And like, it just turned out to like, basically a long story short, uh, ticket got got like got booked kind of quick it was a little last minute um and like marco booked it and i don't think who's he got... marco is he distro down there or i i couldn't I could, honestly that's like <laughs> yeah i think he does like he does stuff uh, like for the distro down there and he just holds it down down there is he, he's the dude that brings the guys out yeah yeah a couple yeah. times your dudes will end up going down there yeah like i've seen like uh nick nick bruce was down there yep um and you know like i had talked to a few people at animal sandoval and, and buckworth park dudes i think went out there recently yeah um i think the shadow guys have done stuff down there yeah yeah i think so yeah. too. yeah 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 so he's just he's just the dude who's holding it down there and I, he so he booked this ticket and it was like I had a, like, he didn't send me the itinerary before, and I just was like, like, I told him the dates, and I was like, yeah, yeah, book it, you know? And the ticket was, like, from San Diego, left here at, like, 6.30, and then I got into LA at, like, you know, like, 8.30, and then the flight wasn't, the next flight wasn't until, like, 9 o'clock the next morning out of LA. So you had, like... 12 13 hours yeah and i like and i hit him up and i'm like yo like this is not like i don't i don't think he knew how close san diego and la are like yeah. i don't think i think that i was like he, like if we had just talked i would have been like bro just book it out of la and i'll just drive up there I'll make it you work, know yeah. i'll make it work whatever i'll figure it out so you know like i'm talking to him and i'm like dude like I, at this point i'm like planning on like i had just bought a new camera and like I just, I'm like, oh, man, like I want to, cause that's like, I wanted to go make some videos down there because I wasn't in have like a film or anything. I'm like, I'll make some videos for the YouTube, you know, to be sick, show all these kids, everyone like the whole BMX scene down. It's like a great opportunity to make content, you know? And I'm like, let's be fun. This will be a whole, I'm going to make this dope. It's going to be a dope thing. So, you know, I, I started to stress about not having a place to sleep and being in the airport with my camera and everything else. I'm like, dude, like I can't, I don't think I can physically stay up for that, you know, cause I work. So I'm, I'm working up every day until I leave and then I'm going for a week and then I have to come back and work, you know? So I'm like, this is going to be, this is going to be tough for me to like, you know, stay in the airport overnight. So what I, I like talk to Mark. Well, like, a lot of the time they'll kick you out of the terminal too. Yeah. It'll be closed from one in the morning till five in the morning or something. And, yeah. And I, and I yeah. just didn't even, and I'm like, dude, I don't even know. And then I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out all these different ways and I'm like, all right. So I'm like, 
I found I found like a cheap rented car that I could just drive up to LA and I'm like, all right, this is like I told Mark, I'm like, this is what I'm gonna do. Like I'm gonna just skip the first flight and I'm gonna go straight to LA and just hop on that flight and then go and then take it on out. And he's like, like, Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, you know, and like obviously like I just paid for the rented car, whatever it wasn't, you know, and and I tried and they wouldn't, they like, they wouldn't. Cause you didn't show up at the first flight. I didn't show up for the first flight. And I didn't yeah. know that. Cause I, like, I amateur that, move Colin. And that's not, yeah, that's my inexperience. <laughs> like, I just like, yeah, yeah, you know, it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be all right. It'll be good. You know? And then, you know, they were trying to, ch- they, and they tried to charge me like 700 extra dollars. Yep. And it was like, yep. it was insane. And I'm, I didn't have the money. And like, I literally just, it was like, I didn't have the well, money. On top of that, there's, they, they put the bullshit fees on that. Cause you buy a cheap ticket to where it'd even be cheaper to be like, I'm just going to book another ticket. Like, yeah. I, it's, yeah. It's bullshit airline nonsense. Yeah, yeah, and I just and I'm like freaking out about the situation. I'm like, yo, I don't even have this money. Like, I can't miss a week of work and not and like, you know, and like I feel bad too because I feel like these the kids in Ecuador probably assume that I live here in America and it's like not a big deal. I could have like you know, but it's like that. It's not the situation. Like I, if I were to take that, that would have been a, a hit, you know. Because I'm like, all right, now I gotta like make that money back. Yeah, and like it just that's it, it that's just, enough money to where it's like it was it was and I like and it just. It was like a decision, like yo, I don't even have this, like right now. <laughs> it wasn't even a decision. It was, yeah, it was <laughs> the just decision like, dude, was made I, for I you. Can't, yeah, and it, and and it was so tragic, you know. Like I'm like, this is the worst thing. Have you ever looked? I, look, this is a Gary Young trick, but flying out of Tijuana. I didn't even think about. That. I don't. I don't do it, but Gary does. Uh, a, a handful of guys will do that, at least for other Mexico things. Yeah. Like we go to Guadalajara for the Vans thing, and I think my flight out of San Diego was 400 bucks, and Gary's like, mine was like 70 dollars. Wow, that's insane. And, and you park on the U.S. side of the border and walk across a walkway. It's like right there. Like it's yeah, not, yeah, you don't go through Tijuana about. or anything. Wow. I, I don't know about South America, but that might be something worth looking into just it for might, anything, yeah, for anybody yeah, yeah. out there. Like I'm I'm kind of like, and, and then, then they, like, they left after I didn't got home before I did because <laughs> I, wow, I, went, I went through Houston crazy. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what, yeah, they get the direct. But know, you got you got to get down to, I haven't been to Ecuador, but just like South America and even the Latin countries, like I know. they fucking love BMX and they don't get a lot of it. I know, and I, that's why I they, feel they so think, bad about this whole thing. Like, I'm like, I gotta get a lot down of people there. down there think I'm a celebrity and like take photos with me and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's sick though. Either, like, either, either, hey, either they think I'm Crandall down. or they're starving for people so they fucking love you. But I, I and that's <laughs> I gotta get down there. I gotta make it happen. And, and like I said, like if any of these kids, are, I don't know how many of them speak English, but if any of you are listening, like I am. Are you good with Marco though? Is that? Yeah, that yeah. I talked to him, and he and he said he like he was pretty understanding of the situation, you know. And I, he said we'll, we'll figure it out, but. You know, I haven't talked to him that much since, and I think like right after. Was there was, was there like an event or something? Or yeah, he was gonna hold like a he was gonna hold a contest like when I was there that I was gonna judge and like hang out with those kids, and it just like I said, I'm so bummed that like you know the situation turned into what it turned. Into. And I was like, that's one of those countries though. When you finally go, now they might kill you. That's what I was worried about too. <laughs> and then like, I'm like, oh man, now like because I think like I think that he did get government money to like. Like that was part of it. Like I think the government like helps like helps fly people out there, which is awesome. Which is awesome. But real now, positive like, thing. Yeah, now they might just interrogate me when I get down there. What happened for the first flight? Nah, I'd, I'd try to make it work, man. I'm Especially, gonna. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna just because I like I said I I gotta do right by them and and plan further in advance. You know whether it's LA yeah, or, or if you could do like it a, was just a, yeah it was like it, the whole thing kind of came together at the last minute and they were you know we wanted to just get it done and it's just cool i mean people in in california are so spoiled even a lot of the united states are so spoiled where you go down there and it's like oh these it's such a breath of fresh air seeing how much these kids love bmx you want is. to take photos with everybody you want you know what i mean want to meet people and you know, it's just like where in california they could care less who you are. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. there's a lot of that stuff like there, there'll be jams here that people just don't go to like people mm-hmm. that live here don't go to and it's like oh that's a bummer where it's like if i was a kid i would have driven six it's weird like this. that man like um and kids it's, are just spoiled I don't, it is it's like a spoiled thing it's like southern california in general i'll be honest it's like the like events and jams like the showing of people like people come out like i don't want to say that people definitely come out but as opposed to like the east coast and, and i'm and i'm not talking about like i'm talking outside of bmx i'm talking about sporting events i'm talking things of that nature like the east coast just gets behind stuff like yeah that. like when i lived in philly like the sports teams and whenever there's any like the eagles are playing or the phillies are playing it's insane you know the whole city's just like you know it's everyone's it's game day you know where here it's kind of like do you think it's because they were born into it and so many people in southern california moved here maybe it was that and i also think that it's just like there's so much to do here yeah and there's not as much to do in a lot of those cities and it's just like I don't know what it, I don't know. It's just bigger. bigger. They did a, a feast event a couple years ago in Denver. I don't know if you remember when they did I that. I wanted to go to that one. And it was one. kind of, I think it was a failure. Really? Just a shit crowd. And I think it's because Denver just has outdoor stuff popping off. Yeah, kind of a, yeah. a weird tucked away area. It was yeah. a sick contest. Great course, great riding. Yeah, but just, just like, get the... 
but but then you look at a, something like Denver, and I think there's always shit going on. There's a lot of outdoor sports. There's a lot of mountain biking. I think it's like people get their fix. Yeah, so they don't. Yeah, it's like to go to an event. It's not as you got to get mean, them excited. I mean, like I so it was the second to last year that the Chargers were in San Diego. My brother was out here visiting, and we got tickets to um, like opening game, and it was awesome. Like uh, don't get me wrong, it was a great game, it was a nail biter, but the stadium was like maybe three quarters full and i'm like in my head i'm just like how is this possible like yeah, it's a nail biter yeah. game and it's not sold out like how this stadium's not that big like how on the east coast any there's only so many games in the nfl like it's it's a lot more expensive to get a ticket and then so i kind of knew then like that i was like man this is not good you know and sure enough no r.i.p yeah. r.i.p san diego football i don't i don't follow sports much at all in that sense but i when things it's just funny how people live and breathe it and i guess for you being I, i'm from las vegas we don't have a sport there's a, a oh, hockey yeah. team now I, I i watch the ufc religiously oh man do you really yeah, yeah, yeah. wow just, that's no whoa but, that's a topic but, in itself but, i am but, like a huge ufc are you, fan but growing up in vegas oh, that's God. our local sport ufc yeah yeah it's just because like there was never a sports team growing up wow, and, and the ufc's crazy. in vegas so would, would always go to fights and watch fights and stuff wow. so i'm super into that so i, I guess in that sense i can Get what it. do you think about what do you think about Sugar Sean? Do you know about that? What do you think? I think, think he's he, high all the time. Do you think he took something though for that? No, year? fuck no. What do you think about that? Because I can't believe they pulled that. that well, fight. You, I don't know if you know this, but the same doping agency that busted him is the same one working with BMXers in the Olympics. <laughs> oh the same God. one that recently showed up at Nick Bruce's door at six in the morning and made him piss. Yeah, they do that. I know. I yeah. heard that from the Olympic guys that they do. They do that. And, and I mean. They're looking for steroids. You can have weed in your system. You can have cocaine in your system. They're looking for the. They're looking for other shit. You, if enhancers. it's in competition, it's different. You can't. You can't have cocaine or any of that stuff or elevated levels of THC in your what system. What do you think? What do you think of the McGregor fight? Uh, I was kind of disappointed. I wanted to see him do a bit better, but still, like, it's just if somebody if you had to design a fighter to beat McGregor, it's Khabib. Yeah. Just what he's good at is what Connor's bad at. It, that's it. You couldn't have said it any it's better. So and and you know what? You knew what you. I knew. It was the first takedown on there. It was the first takedown that, like when Khabib took Connor down, it was a sloppy shot, and he still got him. Like he yeah. he picked it. He like picked an ankle, and I was like, oh, that was a batch. And I and when he took the shot, I was like, oh, you know, this is not good for him. This is good for Connor. And he somehow, I was like, how did he manage? Oh, he got an ankle, and that's all it took. And he just mauled into. The, and I was like, but wow, it's, it's, those early rounds, you're not sweaty yet. You know, yep, pretty dry. Yep, and like, yep, and you get taken to the ground early. I was listening to uh, to Daniel Cormier talk about that, and he's Khabib's wrestling coach or one of the main ones or whatever. And he was saying that uh, it's kind of what they they train for is. Because Daniel Cormier is an Olympic wrestler, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you look at my takedown rate. It's not that good. It's he's fighting the beast, right? Beast, yeah. Oh, my but God. He, but he, he was saying, like, we don't we don't shoot to just get the takedown every time. We just try over and over. We'll try 20 different takedowns. Yeah, They're yeah. going to be a sloppy and all, but one of them is going to work. One and we're going to try until it works. As soon as you get that one and, and that's your you strong that grip. And, yep. I don't know, man. It's a, Yeah. This has got to be annoying a lot of people that like bikes. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. You're fighting. If you well, guys, we'll, we'll grab a beer hey, after this and redo this. Yeah, if you guys, if you guys don't watch UFC. I'm telling you, that's a good sport to watch. That's it's it's, it's just modern day gladiators. It is, is what it is. It's the humans haven't changed one bit. We're the same. We're the, the same Greek in the Rome. This is the same thing. We don't have swords. You anymore, have those but the drive. It's like it's, it's weird it's stuff you can't understand. Like why dudes yeah. want to fuck chicks. Like oh, it's, <laughs> it boils down to mating. Why do you like that chick's big primal. ass? She yeah, has, people like, like to think they're not primal. Hips, like people like to think they're not primal. That they're above primal primal instincts, but they are not. Tell till you cut them off in traffic and they want to fucking murder you. Yeah, that's you. that's it. <laughs> yeah, especially out here, man. They'll get you. Yeah, no, it's so crazy. People are. People are people, man. And people it's are people. A That's a good point. Strange, strange, strange mess. Yeah. What's uh, what's next for you? You got anything exciting coming up? Oh, man. I don't working. Know. But yeah, working. That's Teach, pretty, te- teaching, teaching kids. Teaching kids. Are you? Are you? It. Is it? Are you doing PE or are you doing uh like classroom shit? It's classroom shit. I actually got my degree in early childhood, so I'm certified like preschool through fifth and then through eighth in history. But I don't really want to be a teacher anymore. Um, yeah. And for no other like. I mean, I don't really want to go into a long spiel about that, but I, I really do like, you know, I like education and I like the field, but it's just a lot of pressure and not, you don't get paid well. And it's just, yep. it's just like looking at it practically for something that I want to do for the rest of my life. I don't think I'm passionate enough about it. You know what the salary for a full-time teacher in Southern California is? Um, I mean, do I, do I, are you asking me seriously? Do you know what it is? I don't know. Um, I mean, they start off low and they start off at like 30, 40 grand. Yeah, and then my, my buddy. They, they, they work their way up. You know, if you're there for a while, you can get, you paid pretty well but 
My, I got a buddy that jumped through all the hoops and got his degree and did it in, uh, in Vegas, a guy I grew up with, and I think they started him at $29,000 yeah, a year. it's sad. My it's like, dude, you can't even, like, and you're supposed to be educating the future, and that's like, that's the number one, that's why, like, if you are, why is the education system failing? Okay, well, number one, nobody that's smart is ever going to want to be a teacher. Why? If I'm, yep. if I have any type of, of brain power to work <laughs> out the mathematics of the, like, okay... That, that's what happened to me as soon as I got I'm like wow I don't love this enough to get paid this you know what I mean I'm like now I'm you know I'm already like well I'm thinking about things that I can do and go back to school and, and re-educate myself in, in other areas and get yeah. jobs that I would love 10 times more and get paid so much you know what I mean so much better it's just it's not logical for me to 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 do that full time for sure my, my buddy that does it in Vegas um inherited like 25 houses he's a rich guy Wow. So so he's like good. He, he doesn't need the teacher so he money. He, he can do what he good wants. Good health insurance, you know. They have good benefits, right? And he enjoys it. Yeah, yeah. And he that's, that's it, another you know? thing too. It's not like it is, and it's, it's awesome, man. Teaching kids is. I really they're, it, like their brains are like sponges. You know, you learn so you don't think about it now that you're older. But when you're those years, those primal years, like you are learning so much important stuff. And like I think the education system really like after fifth grade is that's. Like after you have all your base of, I think that's where this the system kind of fails. You know, I think yeah, it needs to be more you know individualized at that point, and kids need to really start figuring out what they want to do. I mean, not that anyone's going to figure it out at eighth grade, but you know, and kids have certain at interests. At least give them the tools. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It's it's hard because I I don't know how I feel about all this sort of stuff because I I see both sides to it, but it's weird to me when there's something like like medicine that is at least in the United States, you know, uh, kind of private and doctors can charge you what they want. You can go to this doctor and it's more expensive. Yeah. This doctor and it's cheaper, but education isn't, you know what yeah. I mean? Where it's like, yeah. like, I mean, you can put your kid in a private school and stuff like that, but like short of like homeschooling them and all that, like there aren't a whole lot of options. It just kind of seems like I, I didn't have a senior year in high school and I wasn't exactly the, the smartest man in, in the world, believe it or not. But I, uh, was just, I just had enough credits to where it was like, you can take one class at home and not go next year. That was my senior year too. Was it? Because like if I if I, if I if I didn't take, if I if I went my senior year, I had to take a minimum of like four classes, and I'm like, so I can just do. I one did. Or- well, I did. I did two. I still had like two classes or three classes, but like I didn't, I was there like barely at all. My senior year was pretty awesome. Yeah. So basically, what you're saying is we're a lot smarter than most people. I I, I just did all my classes early on. I had all my credits, so it was like, what do you? Yeah, do? I didn't. I didn't even go out of yeah, my way. It just worked out that I way. I did when that you with don't college too. Like yeah. I, like the program that I was in because I went. And like, if any kids, if you are listening out there, please, please, I like can't stress this enough. If you don't know what you want to do and you're going to go to school, don't go to a university. It is the stupidest thing that you could ever do. And nobody's going to tell you, nobody's going to guide you. And I'm sorry if your parents aren't smart enough to tell you this, but I am. Do not go to a university. You're going to spend upwards of 30 grand a year. And that money, unless your parents are paying for it, which even if they are paying for it, it's a waste of their money. And if it's not, you're going to take out these loans. And then when you're done and that accumulates and you get out, you got to pay that off you will, every you single You will be molested. Month. You will be. And <laughs> it's there's, there's no, it doesn't matter what you want to do. If you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, you can go to community college for two years and get your associates and transfer anywhere you want to any university. So why even, it's just, it's not practical. Get those two years, get those two years for as cheap as you can get them. And then when you're looking into universities, look at pricing. Like really think about those kind of things. Don't, be, oh, well, this school, you know, there's a, little, like a good party scene. Like that doesn't, yeah, you're paying, when you're paying 30 grand a year to party, you're wasting your money. You know what I mean? It's. And it's really like, I really feel bad because I think a lot, like a lot of my friends too, they're in that situation where they graduated and they, you know, they went to a four year university and now they, they, they have to keep their job and, and have to, you know, like I was lucky. I went to community college for two years and then I, I went to a program that was like partially online and through my community college, it was the cheapest way I can do it. And I got, you know, I have a teaching degree. It's, I got one in New Jersey. And then when I moved out here, I got my teaching degree out here. I just had to take a few tests and it's legitimate. I have a legitimate you know, degree and it, I'm almost done paying my student loans cause they weren't much, you know? So yeah, I, it's smart to think about that. I know a lot of kids just don't know, you don't know anything when you're, you know, well, and I think a lot of parents too, it's kind of a different era. It's different. Yeah. It's, you know a, what yeah, I mean? it's, it's like, not like it was when they were kids, you know, go to college. And, I know so many idiots with degrees. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't take, I, and I don't have one. And I consider myself so smart. Yeah. You're but. a genius. <laughs> no, no, but, but like, yeah, really it's, it's, and it's, I think one thing for kids too, it's like, if you don't know what you want to do, you don't need to fucking go to college. Don't no, dive don't. in on this yeah. debt. Yeah, because that's the thing. Is you go to school for that. Like even for me, like I'm so lucky with with my degree um, because I substitute in San Diego, and San Diego they pay pretty well for substitute teachers, like pretty much highest in the country. So that helps me a lot. Like if I didn't have that, 
you know, like back home, they only pay like 80 bucks a day or something. I think it's a hundred, hundred in Vegas. Yeah. I'm yes. From. It's not, it's yeah. not good. So it's like, you know, anywhere else it really wouldn't be that good for me, but here it, it's good for me. And you need to have a degree to substitute teach out here too. It's like, a, you know what I mean? You have to have a little bit more of an education. You can't just have, I think an associates in a lot of states. Mm-hmm. You can, yeah, yeah. That's what like in like my town, it was like, you only needed like 60 college credits or something. You had to show up and ask. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty much, pretty class? much. But, but yeah, so, <laughs> so that helped me out here, you know, and going further with what I want to do, like, I don't know what I want to do yet, but I, I think if I want to do anything, I've been more recently considering going back for physical therapy and nice. And like to do that, I already have my four years, so I don't have to go for another three. But even that, I'm, I'm hesitant to do that because I have to be 100 percent on it. Because I and I know that because I know once I do that and I dive into that, that's it. That's my path. I'm gonna spend those money and those. I'm gonna spend enough money in those three years that I'm gonna have to make that back, and I'm gonna need a job with a good, with a substantial like a consistent. It's income, gonna be you know 70 hour weeks of school right in a 70 hours a week of work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that and that's a grind, you know. And that's but but when the time is right, that's a super respectable thing to do, and I think it's a a good thing you yeah know? Like yeah it's, i i don't think you'd hate that no that's, that's i don't think you're there yet i think you should ride the bmx wave a little while longer i know it's tough yeah. it's unfortunate that where the industry is right now that you you can't make a proper living you can't buy a house you can't go you know what i mean like it's a bummer and, and it's no no shame on your sponsors by any means i understand the industry's rough right now but it's just a shame that a guy like you riding at your level isn't fucking killing it, it it's it's a bummer for the sport because I, I i'd hate for for bmx as a whole to miss out on on writers like yourself and and similar that have to go and dive into to different jobs and whatnot as opposed to giving their talents to BMX when there's so much potential right there. Yeah, that's and that's a hard thing too. Um, like you know, I I I really like you could always you could look at the look at it as the glass half full, glass half empty. You know, and I really like there's part of me like sometimes I'm like man, you know, like I wish. I wish I didn't have to work. I wish I could be out every day just like looking for spots. I could be like in the gym in the morning, like fixing up my body, healing, and you know, I wasn't, you know, driving around trying to make, you know, like just get this little bit of extra money, whatever, you know, yeah. it, it'd, be, it'd be nice. But then, then there's the other part of me that I could sit there and look at it like, wow, look at all the places I've been that like nobody in my family ever got to go to. Not like all these people that like I know that I went to high school with and like they never got to do and see and and be a part of like this culture and, and this this awesome thing you know so yeah, it, yeah. even though even though you know like you know this it's it's hard it's you can't you know i, I really think state of mind is everything in, in life in general you know you really have to be mindful and like i'm not saying i'm perfect at it because you know i lose my, my mind pretty much every day you <laughs> we know? All do. but but it's 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 you know state of mind you got to be thankful and grateful for what you have but yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't wouldn't like to make a little bit more money. <laughs> what, what, or have an extra extra couple couple zeros yeah, on the yeah, income. It'd but, be uh, nice. It'd be nice. But I think that's just unfortunately that's BMX right now. So hopefully more kids yeah. want to buy bikes and uh, you got royalties on that frame. Buy your yeah, frame. Yeah, buy my frame. <laughs> hey, so yeah, kids kids that are wondering the V2 man, the V2 is better than the V1. I'll tell you that. Is it out? It's out. I got to do something for it. I got to do a little bit more promotion because I don't think kids even know like what's different about it and what is different. Um so it's not just the color no it's not nice. just the color okay. so like the v2 two major changes to the v2 uh head tube slightly taller so you don't have to run as many spacers don't have to cut your forks that's nice um yeah and, and it looks better in my opinion i think the frame's a little bit stronger too is um like a little bit more space between the welds you know um like the head tube in the bottom tube and then i also dropped my bottom bracket from it was 11625 and i dropped it down to 11 and a half Um, and what that does is it just creates, you just have a lot, the bike's a lot more stable at higher speeds. I think your feet are a lot closer to the ground, puts you in a little bit more of an upright position. Um, whips come around a little quicker. Like if you have to put a foot down, you're closer to the ground. And it just, I really never like BMX went through this little phase where the bottom bracket started to get higher. And it's because I think people were riding like 28 twos and 30 twos and doing like crook rinds. And I, and like, that's cool and all, but. I hate the way my bike. I, I hate that. That <laughs> I hate that feeling. I feel like I like on a on stilts. It just it's so much harder to balance and control my bike. So, um, like I originally had an eleven six two five, um, and I wanted to try to drop it to see, you know, if everything like I still had the grind clearance. And sure enough, you know, I'm still able to, to do grind, uh, crooks and switch crooks without anything rubbing. So, I think that's pretty much as low as I can go, though. You know, at the limit, but it, it feels better. You know, it counterbalances that short back end. A lot of people thought, it, you know, like I think it's definitely very like loopy because it's short, but with the bottom bracket being a little bit lower, it stabilizes it and it's still just as easy to kind of snap the bike. So it, it's a really good feel. It's just the bike feels, you know, just 
good really everything i kind of want to frame right now so it's kind of a random question you ever think about working in the bicycle world you seem really knowledgeable and well thought out about this and i yeah. think it needs more i don't know if you'd have any desire to at all i would but it's just like just finding a place and a niche and somewhere in i mean all. even even like like road bikes and shit like that i think someone with your brain and your knowledge could probably dude road bike. it's funny because i just got into road bikes recently and it's so what did you get what kind of bike did you get a mossy nice shout out to joey Cobbs. he hooked it up with a fat discount great guy yeah super handsome helped guy. me out yeah it helped me out big time me and my girl we both just like it was like she got her bike stolen when we first moved out here it's such a like it's so tragic you know it was like you locked in our apartment complex in like our courtyard and somebody busted in and snapped it like, during the like, like the, somebody really wanted to steal that yeah, bike it yeah, wasn't just left yeah up front. and it wasn't yeah. that like nice of a bike so you know she's been wanting one ever since and and like i it's kind of just something like i think it's just like, like san diego is a really good place for road bikes there's a lot of elevation yeah. change a lot of a lot of like shoreline riding where you're riding along the beach and it's just nice and it's just a good way to exercise yeah the older i get the more like i just i try to like stay active and and you know even if i'm not riding bmx i try to just keep in stay in shape you know that's a big thing you know even if i'm like some downtime with riding because of like this injury or that injury i like to just keep like my physical up because i don't like losing it and then having to like those you like having to suffer those first few weeks of coming having, back having to, to riding back yeah, in yeah. Shape and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's like i really try to just maintain and that's like i think the road bike's really good for cardio you throw it back to like the ufc thing you hear guys talk about like you got to stay in shape year round even yeah, when you're yeah. not in camp because otherwise the first month of camp is trying to get back in shape yeah and that's right. and like see like even me talking about this like a jocked out kind of a thing but that's like whatever maybe i'm kind of a jock for 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 that but that's just like I don't know the way I see it when I'm riding I like to have fun and riding's fun to me when I'm riding the way I I see riding and the way I want to ride and I can't ride that way unless my body's feeling 100 you know like I can't do everything if something feels a little off like in my body if my shoulders sore they say like tricks become that much harder and it's just that like you know certain things are sensitive so I for me it's like I don't, I don't want to be frustrated at the skate park because everything's hurting I'd rather spend that extra time in the gym and just keep everything lubed up and i think more people are doing that than they like lead on yeah i think everyone i think all the top dudes are pretty pretty healthy i think the days of we're all savages (laughs) the fucking send it are kind of gone yes people don't like to admit it but you'll see you'll see that you know i won't say names but you'll see the 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 metal winners drinking a a protein shake you know (laughs) yeah yeah, you gotta stay more power to them as as you should it's good for you it's better for you than uh an energy drink believe it or not (sighs) But I'll give you one more here, and then uh, we'll get on with uh, with life. Uh, who's your favorite rider of all time? Oh my god, dude, Gary Ellis. See? <laughs> Wrong answer. Wrong answer. Yeah, just, it's just a joke. I was just like the <laughs> oldest, oldest memory of riders that I could think of. I don't even know, man. Who, who of all time, man? That's just an intense question on so many. Like, you know, I got in trouble for doing that. Like they, when I did the ride. Uh, favorite rider, oh, did you do favorite one rider? Of those? yeah i did and and like you know it's like, funny you got to pick one person and i pick three people and they're like that's the way it's got oh be. they're like we can't you know what i mean and i was like i mean i guess like yeah if i like i don't think i could really narrow it down i mean I, like i said scotty was my f- like like i mean racing i had people i looked up to like racing you know just watching people on the track but then like freestyle like scotty was like one of my first influences because he owned the skate park that was you know closest like was in the general vicinity you know his dad used to own the tracks so i'd go there and i kind of watched him come up so i used to be heavily influenced by him i got a little bit older just garrett was a huge influence of mine and davy watson was another one yeah um that was those three were like pretty big we'll say scotty because you said him first scotty yeah like scotty <laughs> scotty i mean and I'd, i think at the time that scotty like i hadn't like that influence like that was like mm, the when i progressed the most riding like that's when i like learned how to do a bar spin and a tail whip and uh like i learned so many tricks that i still do today and like learned so many basic things and it was like just kind of looking up to his his riding and how he's doing things and shout out scotty great fucking guy yeah i was like watching i was like watching a a video of him the other day actually like dom simon scene he was watching on his story i was like yo what edit was that he sent to me it was like one of his props ones and he did like uh is that like the shark fin at incline club he did like a 180 180 uh tire tap to half cab tail whip to manual to like tail whip into another quarter and it was just like i, I never you know what i mean he, just to see i just he like had a level of bike control that can't that, be matched that is like how do you even yeah there was a lot of that i remember i told this story i don't remember if it was on a podcast or what but there was a time when just fucking around many many years ago he did a 
at a do tour in practice a giant step up front flip to manual around to whip in and like nobody even saw it i was like it's like the first time i ever saw somebody do a front flip to manual yeah, it's insane, i think man, i've seen yeah. it maybe once since and it was scotty fucking around in practice like, yeah yeah that's yeah he was on a whole nother comfort level with not it. not to to make things tragic here and hopefully i'm very wrong it's a bummer when guys like since Aitken got hurt, there's never going to be another guy with that style. Yeah. Since Scotty got hurt, I don't know if anybody will ever have that bike control again. Nah. You know, like One it, in it's, a million. it's yeah. I think some of this stuff isn't like there's going to be a new guy that does that. Whereas a lot of progression there is. Yeah, yeah. But It'll just like, be different. Somebody it's, it's they'll, just, just, they'll have their own like little thing. Yeah, or whatever. things will change, but it's just like. But I, that's cool. That's what that's what makes it the legacy of Scotty. And I mean, look at Scotty now. He's such an inspiration to like everyone like i watch even just like him still continuing to just like you know through everything he's still trying like i seen him ride down the stairs the other day i'm like damn that's crazy like that he's still like after everything like he's back on a bike pedaling around like that's crazy that's i've pulled scotty aside a couple times like no cameras around or anything and i'm like are you actually this happy is this fucking fake you know (laughs) and he's like it's so it's so real man i got what a fucking awesome guy yeah positive influence he's he's the dude when i'm on the road uh, that'll come watch fights with me when there's fights on that's awesome <laughs> scotty will come watch me get drunk yeah. at a bar and watch fights i will come watch any now that i know <laughs> now that i didn't know that you were like a fight guy but i'm like dude, yeah i'm a huge ufc fan cool man Mar- mixed martial arts that's to say because i've been watching some of the bellator stuff i watch all the bellator's more tenor- I, like, I like bellator more i think yeah they khabib said he might go there or something no he won't something. he's locked down in a contract yeah oh there you go he, he talks big and then he gets those checks and he's like oh this yeah. spends the same in russia actually better <laughs> anyway colin appreciate it brother you're a good man yeah um, thanks for having me thanks for educating the children of earth yeah i don't know about that <laughs> that's smart, man. Keep up the good work, man. Yeah, thanks. I, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, thanks buddy. for the coffee again. Yeah, yeah. All right, that does it for this week. Big thanks to Colin for stopping by. Be sure to follow him on Instagram at Colin Like What, all one word. I'm about to take off to China for two weeks, so I plan on uploading like normal, but there may be a slight delay based on the crazy time zone and the crazy internet restrictions in China. So expect everything to be wonderful, and if it's not, sorry. And until next time, just remember, it doesn't count if you don't pull the roll back. Thanks.